Good morning and a very warm welcome to Politas House Call here on SABC2. Mafrika Bora Amate, Gadiba Hotabo Hayaka. I'm Dr. Victor Ramatesele. The Nanoluk Sizang Nagakatu. Let us when I sat on the session, the session, Hora Haile Yabrobong Hussein. Now, we did not bring you Politas House Call last Saturday as we joined the whole nation in giving a sorrowful send-off to the late Deputy Minister of Health, Dr. Modifis Fularo, who, by the way, graced our studios about a year ago. And in his honor and memory, let us watch the highlights of that particular show that we had with him. Dr. Mulefi Sefularo was appointed Deputy Minister of Health by President Thabo Mbeki in 2008 and was reappointed in May 2009 by President Jacob Zuma's new administration. He was born in Pochefstroom in the Northwest Province and he was from a working class family. I was born in Pochefstroom about 50 years ago. <laughs> My origins and, and my background and, and even my connect, continued connectedness uh, to those origins make me understand and remember all the time where the ordinary people of this country are. With many academic qualifications, including an MBCHB from Medunsa and diplomas in tropical medicine and hygiene, public health and health service management, he was one of the longest-serving MECs for the National Department of Health of South Africa. Dr. Mulefi Sefularo died in a car accident on the west of Pretoria on Monday, the 5th of April, and was laid to rest at the Heart to Bear Sports Cemetery on Saturday, April 10th. He was a rare individual who remained a core member of society without demonstrating any false grace. The government will intensify its fight against HIV and AIDS and other infectious diseases in honor of the late Deputy Health Minister, Sed Mutlante. South African health system is the best on the continent and is one of the best in the world. Um, we believe that uh, around uh, the matters of quality national health insurance, uh, primary health care, saving mothers, saving children, uh, we, working together with the people of South Africa, can actually uh, achieve even more. Let's hope we can continue his vision of our health system in South Africa. May his soul rest in peace. Now today we discuss the treatment of cephalgia, now a common medical problem that affects many of us at some point or another. We invite you to join us at discussion by calling Johannesburg or 0839134687 or you can send your SMSs to 33723, starting of course with the word Bonitas. As you welcome into the studio, Dr. Elion Shevel, who is a surgeon at the head of the clinic, as well as Professor Girish Mori, the head of neurology at the Vet Rogers Rand Medical School. But to set the scene, let us watch this insert that tells us about this very common medical condition that we call cephalgia. The primary headache syndromes are migraine, tension type, and cluster headaches. Migraine and cluster headaches are episodic and recurring conditions. Tension type headache is usually episodic, but may be chronic, occurring daily or almost daily for more than 15 days a month. Chronic tension type headache occurs in only slightly more than 2% of the population. Several epidemiological studies conducted in various areas of the world indicate that the prevalence of migraine headaches range from 12 to 18% of the population. Migraine is three times more common in female patients. The prevalence of cluster headache is less certain. This uncommon condition probably affects less than 0.5% of the population. The pathophysiology of headaches is not well understood. Migraine and cluster headaches are believed to initially begin in the brain as neurologic dysfunction, with subsequent involvement of the trigeminal nerve and cranial vessels. Tension type headache can be primarily a central neurological disturbance similar to migraine or can occur as the result of increased cervical and pericranial muscle activity. Migraine is an inherited condition in which there appears to be an episodic instability of the neurovascular system. Most patients with migraine do not have an aura. 
An aura is a well-defined visual or neurologic deficit lasting less than one hour, occurring in only 15 to 20 percent of sufferers, and is followed by the headache. Most auras are visual, with photopsia being most common. Tension type headache is characterized by generalized pressure or sensation of tightness in the head. Cluster headache causes intense pain that is generally steady and boring behind one eye. Most patients with primary headache require medication. However, other management methods like the use of cold packs, pressure on the temple and sleep may also be useful. There you go, cephalogia, cephalodemia, or otherwise we call it headaches. Now, um, today we want to concentrate Professor Modi and Dr. Shevel on, on mainly the treatment. But of course, as we discuss, we might, and we have to, you know, talk about causes, because if you're trying to address the, the treatment, you've got to talk about causes a little bit. What are primary and what are secondary headaches, Professor Modi? I, I think your insert, by the way, is, is excellent. And you've taken away our fire here. <laughs> I've stolen your thunder. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm stolen sorry. away my thunder. Anyway, but, but I think that team, that's, yeah. that's probably the most important thing to understand. The primary headaches are the headache disorders where we don't find a, a simple treatable mechanism. I'm okay. not going to say cause, I'm going to use the word mechanism. Okay. The secondary headaches are the ones where there is an underlying anatomical, physiological, or chemical mechanism. Nice. Example, you could get an acute sinusitis, that would be a secondary headache. If okay. one of my sinuses got blocked, I had severe pain, and it manifested as a headache, then that would be a secondary headache. I see. Right. Acute mastoiditis behind the ear, your mastoid bone, okay. can produce a lot of spasm in your neck muscles, produce a severe headache that can mimic can mimic migraine okay. and that would be a secondary headache and then the obvious dangerous secondary headaches are the ones from tumors aneurysms or vascular lesions in the brain mm. which rupture you know the typical one where you get the little berry aneurysm which is the, like the a balloon, oh head disease yeah the mm. ballooning of a blood vessel in the brain that bursts mm. and produces that massive headache with severe and devastating consequences. I see. Okay, so those are the things we talk about when we talk about secondary headaches. But the okay. big ones we know, then there are little ones. Okay. The secondary headaches, like I alluded to, the sinus headaches, the mastoid headaches. Sometimes people have these developmental malformations, the so-called Arnold Chiari malformations, a part of the brain dips into the neck, mm. and that can produce tension-like or migraine-like headaches. So those are all the secondary causes or secondary mechanisms okay. for a headache disorder or a headache syndrome. And that's our role as neurologists, usually to identify those, okay. to sort that out, separate that from the primary ones, as your insert said, the primary ones are migraine, tension headache, and cluster. And the mechanisms underlying these are not the ones that we see. In other words, your investigations that we do on those patients come out with nothing, so they're normal. Okay. Now, let's talk about the primary headaches. Now, yes. now before we get into that, now you're running a headache clinic. I am. Here in Johannesburg? We've got branches in Johannesburg, Durban, and Cape Town. Beautiful. So, headache is big business. There are <laughs> probably, uh -huh. uh, there are so many headache sufferers. Yeah. It's, uh, it's probably the most common cause of visits to the GP. By all means. Yeah. Now, you are a maxillofacial surgeon. Yes. So basically you are trained as a dentist and then you, you, you specialize in dealing with the complicated stuff that an ordinary dentist could not yes. deal with. And how I did a medical how, degree as well. Oh, you so. have a medical degree as yes. well? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so, so it is not because of the headaches that you found on people who have dental problems that you became interested in headaches. That also you've, you've studied you know, the whole... The whole yes. Genre, and, and also belong to a lot of international organizations around headache. Okay, now tell us a little bit more then about the primary headaches because I suspect this is what you also get to see in your practice. Well, this is really what we at the Headache Clinic treat. As mm. Professor Modi very well pointed out and explained, the secondary headaches, you've got to make sure that the patient doesn't have a secondary headache. Mm. 
Mm. So all our patients are seen by a neurologist. And once they have excluded any yes. identifiable cause of a headache, Correct. once they've excluded meningitis, they've excluded dental problems, they've excluded eye problems, ear problems, mastoid problems, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, they say, fine, you, you can deal with that. Yes, okay. well, what our philosophy is, is to find out what structure is causing the pain. You know, when you have pain, there's got to be something mm. that is hurting. Okay. Somewhere that the pain is coming from. Right. Now we know in, uh, in migraine and tension headache that the brain is more sensitive. Okay, and before we get there, yeah. for, for the sake of the view, and also for my sake, yes. can you describe migraine quickly? What type of headache is it? Well, migraine is, I think the simple definition is that it's, it's sometimes called a sick headache. You have uh, um, typically one-sided headache, throbbing, you have nausea and vomiting, uh, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity. What do you call the aura, which is uh, almost... Uh, the, uh, that's that's an additional of, thing. I see. The aura is, uh, in, a, in a certain, about 20% of people, uh, before the pain starts, mm. they have certain neurological symptoms. For instance, they might see uh, zigzag lines, or they might even lose vision in a, a part of the orbital field. Um, you might get numbness of the hand, even sometimes they don't okay. speak properly. So that is, before that, the, that is before the onset of the pain yes. itself. And when the pain starts, it's also associated with other symptoms, you said? Yes. Okay. So Typically on one side, and what other symptoms is associated with? Well, as I said, nausea and vomiting, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity. It's usually worse on mild exercise. Mm -hmm. But th that is the definition. Okay. But all these different types of headaches, there's no clear-cut line. That's fine. We'll, we'll come to that. Now, tension headache, how different is it from, from me? Tension headache is normally described as a band of pressure around the head. Mm -hmm. And well, although one might be nauseous, you're not as nauseous as if you have migraine. Mm -hmm. You can have some light sensitivity, but it's not as bad. Okay. You can have sounds. All the symptoms that you get with migraine can occur with tension headache, but you don't get them so much or as badly. Fine. Cluster headache? Cluster headache is a terrible one. Mm. Cluster headache is called cluster because it comes in clusters. You might go typically a whole year without any headaches at all. And then all of a sudden for a couple of weeks or two months or whatever, you get these terribly, terribly painful headaches up to eight times a day that last a short while they are called suicide headaches because they are so bad. And other symptoms go with it. The, there's swelling around the eye, people, uh, there's tearing, the nose gets blocked. There are a number of other symptoms as well. And that headache is very difficult to treat. Uh, and it's, it's the most important one to treat because simple, it's so... And simple headache, how, how does it differ from this three now? Simple headache. Well, it's just... Uh, just I don't think there's a definition of simple headache in the medical world. Okay. That would be more a tension headache, I okay. think they call it. Okay. Anyway, I want to with the wrong matter. We'll continue our discussion on treatment of cephalology or headaches. Hang on to the papazo, Harabateo, and stay with us. Please pay attention because if you don't pay attention, you are going to pay somebody, of course. <laughs> and certainly one of my one of my guests here, you'll definitely pay them if you don't pay attention. Now let's talk about now which type of headaches, Professor Mori? will be seen by a headache, by, by a general practitioner or even by primary health care nurse. And which type of headaches will be seen by you? And what is the process? Of, at what point would you refer a headache? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you alluded to that. You called it the simple headache. Yeah. Now, the simple headache is, is no such thing as a simple headache. Okay. But the simple headache is what goes to the general practitioner. Mm. And it's a mixture of the three things.